At the beginning of April 2018, Microsoft added two new performance levels to Azure SQL Database, which are completely different to the way it has been done up to now, and this could be of interest to many people. Up to now, we have chosen our performance level based on database throughput units, or DTUs, which is an arbitrary value based on a mix of CPU, memory, and throughput rates. This can be difficult to work out how many DTUs you need compared to your traditional SQL Server. Well, Microsoft have introduced a vCore based performance level. It's currently in preview and not rolled out to all Azure regions, but you can now select the number of cores and the amount of memory you want for your Azure SQL database. There are two types you can select from, general purpose and business critical, which offer different performance levels. So let's go to the portal and let's take a look. Here I am in the Azure portal with a list of my databases on here. I'm going to use the AdventureWorks 2012 database, which is in the North Europe data center. The West Europe data center at the time of recording doesn't support the vCore performance options. So let me click on AdventureWorks 2012. And my pricing tier is currently basic. So let me click on basic. And here we can see the basic, which gives me five DTUs and two gigabytes of disk space and costs only four pound a month. We can go to a standard model, which starts off at 10 DTUs and two gig of space for 11 pound a month, which we could push right up to 3000 DTUs. And if we wanted to up to a terabyte of space, for 1700 a month. If we are using our premium performance tier for our IO intensive, we can start off with 125 DTUs for 400 pounds, and we can push that right up to 4000 DTUs for nearly 12,000 pounds a month. But over here, we can see that we have a vCore based purchasing option. If we click on this, this will bring us to our new screen so we have general purpose and we have business critical so starting with general purpose we can start off with one v core one terabyte of memory for 293 pound a month so it's quite a lot more expensive than our standard and basic dtus we can increase our number of cores up to four and you'll see the disk space available to us also goes up and we can have 16 cores with four terabytes of space which is going to cost us three thousand pounds a month which is quite a lot of money but notice here now that we're using the vCore model we also have to purchase sql server licenses which you didn't have to do with the dtu model the dtu model the license cost was included so the question it's asking here if you're using software assurance and as your hybrid benefit, then you can reduce your cost. You can use your software assurance licenses against your vCore model. So if I said yes, that I am using software assurance, then the price now comes down to £2,000 compared to the original of £3,000 a month. The business critical vCore model again starts at one core and one terabyte for £700 a month. And we can push this up to 16 cores, but we only get one terabyte of disk space. It doesn't give us the four terabytes that we saw with general purpose. And that's going to cost us six, six and a bit thousand pounds a month. Now you'll notice you only get to choose the number of cores. As you increase the number of cores, that will automatically increase the amount of memory that you can have. You don't get to choose the amount of memory you wish to have. I'm going to flip over to this screen on the Microsoft website. And here we can see what we actually get. So our general purpose tier, when we had one vCore, we got seven gig of memory. If we got to 16 cores, we get the 112 gig of memory. And then there's lots and lots of figures here about what you get with your core based model. So you can see the uh, latency being offered and the disk size, as we said, it goes from one gig up to four gig, 
how big your log size can be. So there's a limit to how many transactions you could run in one go. So this is a tempdb size from 32, I'm assuming that's gigabytes, up to 384 gig. Um, we've also got IOPS figures and all sorts of other stuff. So with these values, it should be easier to compare the resources that you would need in Azure compared to the resources that you are currently using on premises if you want to move to an Azure based model. So the business critical tier, again, we start off with one core with seven gig of memory up to 16 cores with 112 gig of memory. But the amount of memory is fixed against the number of cores that you're choosing. These run on SSD, which is why they're more expensive, but we are limited to only a gigabyte, a terabyte, sorry, of disk space and 384 gig of tempdb. But the IOPS are ranging from 5,000 to 80,000, which compared to our, compared to our general purpose tier, you'll see that the IOPS range from 320 to 5,000. So you get much better performance out of your business critical tier. vCore is also available for your elastic pools. So if you wish to build an elastic pool around this, that is available as well. So I hope that has given you a, a brief introduction to what the vCore model can do for you. And it may be something you want to look at rather than the DTU model that we have been used to. If you want to give this a try, I suggest you have a read of the Azure documentation to understand it, especially around purchasing licenses and the cost involved compared to the DTU model. Uh, but I think this could be very useful for a lot of businesses that want to stick with terminology they're used to, i.e., cores and memory rather than. DTUs. I hope you found this useful and that you're ready to give the vCore model a look. I hope this video has been useful to you. You can view more of my videos on Azure and SQL databases on my YouTube channel. There is also a free ebook available on Microsoft Azure that you can download from gethanellis.com. So please leave a comment if you enjoyed this video or even if you didn't, and I'll look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much for listening.